Hi guys, this is Mr. Tyrebox123 and in this video I'm going to be showing you the second part to my Western Digital Elements series where we're going to set up these two Western Digital USB hard drives here that you can see in the disk utility in Mac OS X in a RAID 1 configuration. And what that means is that anything that I write to the disk is going to be mirrored across both of these drives and therefore we're going to have redundancy in our data storage. So what that means is that if we were to lose any one of the two hard drives we're still going to have a complete copy of all of our data and I've got some specific data in mind for this that I needed to do this for so I thought I'd bring this to you guys in case you weren't aware that you could do this or maybe you wanted to do something like this but didn't know how. For those of you that do obviously you already know how to do this but for those of you that don't this might be quite useful. So I've plugged these two discs in and what they're already going to have on them is a NTFS partition because that's the way that they come formatted from the factory. So the first thing we've got to do is delete all of the partitions that have been created on them in the first place and reformat them in the Mac file system. So if I click on the first disc and then click on partition in the disk utility we will already have one of the four partitions in there and what we need to do first of all is just erase the partitions and the data on that disk so if you go to one of your disks go to the erase section and then change it to Mac OS extended journaled and then what we're going to do is we're going to give it a name so I'm going to call this WD underscore disk 1 and then I'm going to hit erase and that's going to go away, unmount the disk and delete the NTFS partition that's on there at the moment for Windows, recreate a new partition and format that with the Mac OS extended file system. So once we've done this one we need to go back in and do the other one and then we can look at putting these two in a RAID configuration to get the RAID config that we want so we've got that mirroring going on between the disks. So I'll just let that finish off and we'll come back to this in a moment. So that's now done, if we now look at the disk we can see that it's formatted in the Mac file system and we've got a 2 terabyte partition on that higher drive and it's called WD underscore disk 1. Now what we need to do is do exactly the same on the other disk so as they match up to one another. So we just go through the same process again but this time I'm going to call it WD underscore disk 2 and hit erase. Again, it's going to unmount it, repartition it, and then reformat it, and we'll come back to this in a second again. Okay, guys, so that's now done. We've now got both of our partitions created on both of our drives and formatted as well, and we can see that we've got a total of two terabytes available to us on both of these two hard drives. So now what we need to do is we need to configure these in a RAID configuration to get our mirroring and our RAID 1 therefore getting our data redundancy between the two drives. So if we click on the RAID button here, what we need to do is we need to give it a RAID name. So I'm going to call this WD underscore RAID, but you can call it whatever you'd like to call it. Now in the RAID type, we've got several options here. If we wanted to make it really fast, what we could do is we could choose a, a striped RAID set, and then that would actually stripe data between the two disks and actually write to them simultaneously and read from them simultaneously at the same time therefore almost giving you twice the speed. However, what we're going to do is we're going to set up a mirrored RAID set and once we've clicked the mirrored RAID set there we just need to hit add and then highlight that and click on the options of that disk. Now you can set your block size in here if you're accessing large bits of data you can set it to a higher one if you're accessing small bits of data you can put it to a smaller one but I'm just going to set it to 128k because that suits exactly what I'm going to be using it for. And also in here, we've got the option to automatically rebuild our RAID mirror sets. And what that means is that if we tick that and we lose one of the hard drives and then we replace it with a new one, it's going to automatically rebuild that information for us. So I'm going to leave that unticked because I'd rather do it manually, but you can do that as well. Now, once we've actually created that RAID configuration here, all we need to do is actually drag our partitions over onto that RAID set and then that RAID configuration is now complete. Once we've done that, 
all we have to do is click the create button and that's going to go away and format both of these hard drives and put them into that RAID 1 configuration. So I'm going to hit create there. Now it's going to unmount both of those disks, put them in that RAID configuration, set them up and then reformat it as just one single 2 terabyte hard drive. And anything I write to one of the hard drives will automatically be mirrored directly over onto the other hard drive and vice versa. And therefore, like I said earlier, giving us a solution that if we lose one of the hard drives, we're always going to be able to keep the data that is on it. So it can be very important when you're trying to make sure that you're always going to have a copy of any important data. I'll just let this finish off and then we'll come back to it in a moment. So that RAID set is now created. You can see that we've got the mirrored RAID set. It says that it's online. And then we can see that for both of our two terabyte hard drives, the partition is now a RAID slice for WD underscore RAID. So that disk is now created and it's mounted here on our desktop. So I'm just gonna open that disk up and you can now see if I go to the info of that particular disk that we've got a two terabyte disk here and in the background of that anything I actually write to that is going to be mirrored across the two devices so I hope that was useful for you guys me personally I had to do something like this because I've got some important data that I really can't risk losing and we all know that a hard drive can go at any time whether it be in one day or ten years but it's going to go sometime within that time and this was a really really cheap way round of giving me that data redundancy so I hope some of you found this useful. If you've got any questions, post it in the comments below and I'll see you all in the next video.